Hey guys, Chris Dick here. Uh, today I'm going to start a little series in uh, using uh, ASP.NET Core uh, web applications. And um, I'll flow that at, at some later date into uh, Blazor apps. And I'd hope to uh, add in some uh, web API discussions as well. But first we're gonna start off with uh, ASP.NET Core web application. Um, in Visual Studio 2019, we're presented with a screen like this, uh, where we can create a new project and select from a variety of things here. Uh, this one in particular, uh, we're going to be selecting ASP.NET Core Web Application. If you can't find it, you can always just type uh, Web Application, and you'll see that it'll come up as one of the tops. We're not doing a .NET framework, which is what I've done before. We're going to do a .NET Core uh, application. And you just click on Next. Now for my uh, demonstration here, I'm just gonna put everything to my desktop for, uh, for the time being. And um, I'm gonna start off by just, uh, I'm gonna call this Web Application Video. And uh, we'll keep all the solution information in the same directory. If you're doing a project that is uh, that requires it to be um, uh, in other integrated projects, um, it's a good idea to keep the solution outside of your project. But uh, for this one, it's all going to be all in one, so we don't need to think too uh, too hard about everything here. So let's um, let's move on to next and click on create. So the, the, the next step here is choosing what uh, application you want to start off with for a .NET Core web application. And I'm going to be using the model view controller method. <clears throat> if you're using Razor pages, you could go off and do that d direction. Um, I'm not fully a fan of Razor Pages yet. I'll admit it. I'm I'm not fully bought into that concept, uh, but I do really like the way Model View Controller has uh, has always functioned. It seems to resonate as a as an as the right way to work with it. However, um, that's just my personal opinion aside. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add in authentic authentication here, and we're going to use a, uh, individual accounts. Um, we're using the individual accounts here because it's going to create a local database for us at the same time. We're going to do some manipulation with the database on that side, um, and uh, we'll do that as soon as we're, we're, uh, our project is created here. Um, we can simply go ahead now and just click on Create. Now, once this project creates, um, we'll be presented with uh, a series of files in our uh, solution Explorer. Um, in that uh, Solution Explorer, what we're specifically uh, going to be uh, paying attention to in this video is things like the Startup CS, uh, the App Settings, J, uh, JSON, and uh, into the controllers. We'll also look into data as well. Okay, so let's take a look at the app settings. Now, app settings, if you're familiar with how uh, .NET used to do it, this would be the web config. And uh, now we don't have that in an ASP.NET Core application. So what I'm going to look at here is the connection string. Um, the connection string, first off, very important. If, you don't, if you're not familiar with the MSSQL local DB, you can take a look at my video uh, on uh, setting up your MSSQL local DB if you don't have one already. Um, the server is what SQL server you are going to be working with. Now, typically when you install uh, Visual Studio uh, with the data package, you will also get uh, MS SQL ser uh, server, uh, in this case, the MS SQL local DB. Um, if you don't, uh, again, you can watch that video and you can set it up, or sometimes people will use uh, SQL Express or they have a full version of SQL that, uh, that the server that they have installed in their system, just make sure that you use your uh, server here, okay? And that can be a little tricky, but um, just be aware of what servers you actually have on your system, okay? The next thing is the database name. You'll notice here, okay, um, it's a big long name, and uh, I for one don't, really like the big long name, but it do, they do that on purpose so that it's unique to your application. Um, what I tend to do is just kind of bring it down to something simple. 
Notice where I'm taking this information out. I have the equal sign here, and then I go right to the end, right to this semicolon. Keep the semicolon because that's a delimiter between each of these uh, properties. Um, and I'm just going to call this database web application video. Okay. What 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 would what will happen now is that when I run this application and register a user, it is going to do something called uh, migrations. It's going to run migrations and it's going to update my database. All right. The name of uh, the migrations that it will be running in this case is uh, create identity. OK, and it's what it's going to be doing here is it's going to be setting up all the Microsoft ASP.NET identity tables. So we have roles, users, uh, role claims, and they all have a certain reason for using them. Um, we won't be digging into all of them, but I thought I would just let you know that this is what it will be doing. OK, now you can run these migrations from the package manager console just the same um, if i uh, in fact want to do that right now i can just type update database and what that's going to do is is going to go out to my uh, local db right here okay and it's going out and building that database okay now when i pull up my ssms and I, I, I open up my uh, MS SQL local DB, um, I'm going to be able to see that database is now created. And if it just takes a second to load it up, um, but here we go. Let's see, we got databases, and I have a lot of databases in here. Uh, right here, here's our database. That's the one we just created. If we look at the tables, this is essentially all the tables that are created right there. Uh, it's a nice thing that uh, that migrations does. Uh, it's a great tool um, for managing your databases and keeping them up to date and in um, and in and connected to what changes are happening in your application. If you do any kind of changes um, that affect a data context of any sort. Um, uh, Visual Studio and Entity Framework will will pick that up and migrations will say, hey, there's a change that you've made. You, um, you'll have to fix that and, uh, and then we can move on. Uh, and when we fix that, by fixing it, I mean update the database with the changes, um, you will find that it uh, you know adds any of the changes in here. Okay. We'll do a little bit of, of that today, I hope. Uh, it may spill into the next, uh, the next video, but uh, let's uh, keep moving here. So that was the first thing that we wanted to focus on, is just the app settings. There's not a lot to think about in, in the base application at this point, um, but uh, when we look at the organization of the directory, our um, controllers. We have our home controller. Home controller, again, if you're familiar with uh, .NET Core or .NET Framework, it's there's not a lot of difference. There's a few things that are uh, much better and organized. They use a few better uh, patterns to uh, to manage some of the things uh, in the uh, in the application and in the controllers. Uh, some of these things I really enjoy. Some of them can be a little more ber verbose than they need to be. Uh, models, as usual, is in a models folder. This is a model view controller uh, folder or a uh, application. And of course, here's our views. Okay. Now let's uh, go ahead and run this application. Now the first time, as always, as you always know, it uh, will take a little bit more time to start up that first time. But once you get it running, it uh, it'll be much quicker to uh, to get moving. Um, we're presented right away with our home screen. All right, out of the box, we have our home, we have privacy policy, uh, a few other uh, uh, navigation buttons, a login screen, all right, and a register. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to register <coughs> a uh, user. For this one, I'm just going to pick these the default uh, suggested password. I won't even know what that is. I'll guarantee it. But by doing a register here, what it will do is uh, register in the database. Okay, 
Now, if I go over here into my SSMS and just open up the database, you're going to see that uh, that user is now in the database. And that's me right there. That's the one I just created. Okay. Um, one thing that uh, you want to be aware of is that by default, uh, ASP.NET Core will write this uh, to the database as an email unconfirmed. So it's a zero. Okay. And if you read here, it actually says click here to confirm your account. All right. And all that does is it reaches into the database and changes that value to a one. So if I do this and uh, just click on refresh, you now see that we have a value of one for email confirmed. So very simply, uh, that's what that part does. Traditionally, however, what you would be doing here is you would be sending um, the user an email and uh, that requires uh, a couple other ways of sending email essentially, um, but uh, we're not doing that right now. So now that we've activated our account, we can log in. Okay, so if I log in, I'm now seeing, hello, uh, Chris Dick, and um, I can look at what's my email, uh, my password, I can update my password, two-factor authentication here. This is something really interesting as well. Um, you can do that so that it sends a, a, a SMS message. Um, your personal data, if you have, uh, if, you, if you want to enable people to download their data so that it's not, um, uh, not, not super private, uh, you can pull all that information down. And all the features are sort of stock built into the ASP.NET Core application. Uh, even being able to delete your account is there. Um, so things that you want to think about when you're developing an application. Um, it's the great things about setting up some of these applications though is that there's a lot of stuff that's sort of out of the box and you just have to add a few things to it to uh, expand and uh, and add the appropriate tools to make it suit your needs. So let's uh, log out here. So with all that we've got our first uh, .NET Core web application up and running. Okay. So that's that for this video. Very short. Uh, the goal was just to get you up and running, get you uh, to a point where your application would work. Um, and uh, the next video, I'll start uh, by adding some uh, new data context and controllers to satisfy some of the needs of your data integrated uh, web applications. All right. Have a great day. Remember to like and subscribe. We'll catch you soon. Bye bye.